welcome back. In this example, we'll uh, do uh, some more percent yield. Uh, it's a slightly different question, and in this one, we're told what the percent yield is, and we need to actually uh, work backwards to figure out, um, you know, what the actual yield is going to be. So let's go ahead and read this one. Calcium carbonate can be thermally decomposed to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. You can see the equation there. And it says, under certain conditions, this reaction proceeds with a 92.4% yield of calcium oxide. That's pretty good. How many grams of calcium oxide can the chemist expect to obtain if 12.4 grams of calcium carbonate is heated? All right. So I'm going to rewrite my equation. Calcium carbonate turning into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And it's asking us how many grams of calcium oxide can the chemist expect to obtain if 12.4 grams of calcium carbonate is heated. So if I start with 12.4 grams, how much of this can I expect to obtain? So what this is asking is for an actual yield. How much can you reasonably expect to obtain, knowing that the reaction proceeds with a 92.4% yield? So to figure this one out, we need to first determine the theoretical yield. So theoretically, with 12.4 grams of calcium carbonate, how much calcium oxide should I expect? So remember, with the theoretical yield, we're assuming 100%. Okay. So let's first convert a uh, mass of calcium carbonate into moles of calcium carbonate. So to get from mass into moles, I need to divide by the molar mass. And the molar mass in for calcium carbonate is around 100.09 grams per mole. So 12.4 divided by 100.09. And we have 1 point, 0 0.124, 0 0.124 moles. All right, now it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So that means my number of moles of calcium oxide will equal the number of moles of calcium carbonate. So it's going to be the same number for moles of calcium oxide. Now I just have to turn that into a mass of calcium oxide. So it's going to be number of moles of calcium oxide times its molar mass. And the molar mass of calcium oxide is 40.08 plus uh, oxygen. So that would be 16. So 56.08 grams per mole. All right, so let's figure out what that is. Start from the beginning, 12.4 divided by 100.09. So that gives me my moles of calcium carbonate. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so that tells me that this number of moles of calcium carbonate is the same number of moles I can expect to get of calcium oxide, assuming it's 100%. So I take those moles of calcium oxide and I multiply it now by the molar mass of calcium oxide. So times 56.08 and I get a yield, a theoretical yield of, how many sig digs do I need? Let's keep three. Theoretically, 6.95 grams. So what this is, is a theoretical yield. A theoretical yield can be calculated using stoichiometry. We use stoichiometry to calculate the theoretical yield. Uh, so up until now, before you do it, you'll learn about percent yield or anything. You've been actually calculating per theoretical yields, theoretically assuming 
no loss of reactants or no loss of products as you work up the material, you will get this much out of your reaction. Okay, it's the theoretical yield. Now this says, under certain conditions, this reaction proceeds with a 92.4% yield of calcium oxide. So if we use this much 12 uh, calcium carbonate, 12.4 grams, how much could we reasonably expect? So what we're going to do now is actually find the actual yield. So the actual yield, to find the actual yield, we're going to first convert our percent yield into a decimal. So that would be 0.924, and I multiply it by the theoretical yield. So it's, a, it's a same kind of math, like the theoretical yield, you could view it as like, uh, you know, how many, uh, how much a test is worth. So let's say uh, there's 20 questions on a test, it's out of, it's going to be marked out of 20, and you're told that you got 92.4% on this test out of 20. So you would have to, uh, you know, to figure out how many questions you got right, you multiply that percentage times how many ever questions there would be on the test. So in this case, the questions on the test are actually uh, grams that you measure on a balance, so being the theoretical yield. So we, we first take our percent yield, express it as a decimal, then we multiply it by the theoretical yield, and this will give us the actual yield. So we take this number, 6.9476671, multiply it by 0.924 and we get a percent yield of 6.42 grams. Sorry, not percent yield, actual yield. The actual yield is 6.42 grams. All right, that's it. Um, your actual, so some little notes here, actual yield should be smaller than your theoretical yield. If you're doing calculations and you're finding the actual yield is bigger than your theoretical yield, you've done something wrong. Remember, a theoretical yield is the maximum. That's the maximum you can expect to get out of it. And the, 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 so the actual yield needs to be smaller than that. Um, it assumes that you're going to lose some product or some of the reactant will not have actually reacted uh, or taken part in the reaction. All right, so 6.42 grams is our actual yield. 92.4%, um, that's our percent yield, and the theoretical yield you can determine through stoichiometry. All right, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Um.